everybody, it's Jennifer with the Lamb Library and welcome to Storytime. Now let's start with our hello song so we can say hello to all our friends. Are you ready? Hello, my friends, hello. Hello, my friends, hello. Hello, my friends, it's story time. Hello, my friends, hello. I'm glad you could join me today. And today is World Wildlife Day. So we are going to do some songs and stories that have to do with wildlife. We're going to have both wildlife in other parts of the world, and we'll talk about wildlife in Colorado. And to help us get ready, why don't we start with a song where we get to make animal noises. And we'll start with some wildlife from other places, which we sometimes call exotic wildlife, like the lion. And what does he say? That's right. He roars. And a tiger growls. And the monkeys in the tree say, ooh, ooh, ooh. What does a kangaroo do? Kangaroo jumps. And this is a sloth, whoops, that climbs the tree slowly. And I just realized I put him upside down. He should be like this. Okay, are we ready? And we're going to use the tune from a song I bet you know, The Wheels on the Bus. Okay, and where does the lion live? He lives in the grassy savannas. So the lion in the savanna says, roar, 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 roar. The lion in the savanna says, roar, 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 all day long. Let's hear you roar. Roar. Good job. All right. Now, the tiger lives in the jungles in India, and they also live in the forest in Russia and a few other places. We'll stick with the jungle for this one. The tiger in the jungle says, growl, 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 growl. The tiger in the jungle says, growl, 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 all day long. And now the monkeys live high up in the tree. So the monkeys in the tree say, ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh, 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 the monkeys in the tree say, ooh, 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 all day long. And now we'll do a kangaroo. I'm not sure what a kangaroo says, but what does a kangaroo do? They like to jump. And where do they live? They come from Australia. So the kangaroos in Australia go jump, 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 jump. Jump, 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 jump. The kangaroos in Australia go jump, jump, jump all day long. And now the sloth lives in the rainforest up in the trees and they climb slow, slow, slow. So the sloths in the trees climb slow, slow, slow. Slow, 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 slow. The sloths in the trees climb slow, slow, slow all day long. And we have one more. And this one is a wolf. And they live in the forest. And what do they do? They like to howl at the moon. So the wolf in the forest likes to howl at the moon, howl at the moon, howl at the moon, the wolves in the forest, howl at the moon all night long. All right, great job. And that's a fun song you can do with any kind of animals you want. You can use it to do uh, animals that live in the ocean, animals that live in the zoo, animals that live on the farm. So that's a Great one that's easy to adapt. Now, are you ready for our first animal story? Okay, let's sing our story song to help us get ready. Are you ready for a story? Clap your hands. 
If you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story, an animal story. If you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story, give a roar. Roar. If you're ready for a story, give a roar. Roar. If you're ready for a story, an animal story. If you're ready for a story, give a roar. Roar. If you're ready for a story, say shh. If you're ready for a story, say shh. If you're ready for a story, an animal story. If you're ready for a story, say shh. All right. Now, in our first book, this is a cool lift the flap book, and it's called Who Lives Here? So we'll see where lots of different animals live. And the word for where they live is habitat. And this was written by Nicola Davies and illustrated by Mark Boudouvant. And Candlewick Press is the publishers, and we have them to thank for letting me share this with you. So who lives here? Who lives in this warm, steamy jungle? Who do you think it could be? Is it the snow goose? Not me. I like to live where it's cold and snowy, which you could probably guess from the name. Hmm, let's see who's under here. Is it goldfish? Does a goldfish live in the jungle? No, not me. I like to swim in cool, fresh water. Let's see who's under here. Could it be the cheetah? Mm, not me. I like somewhere dry and grassy where I can run. So he lives, the cheetah lives in the savannah with the lions. Now, let's see who's under the last one. It's, is it sloth? It's me. I live here. And we had a sloth in our song, didn't we? Sloth likes the warm, steamy jungle. He hangs from branches by his long, strong claws. He likes to eat leaves and snooze a lot. Let's see, where are we going to next? From the jungle to who lives here? Who lives in this still cool pond? Hmm. Who lives in the pond? Could it be the gazelle? Not me. I like to live where there's grass to eat. Let's see who's under here. Is it shark? Does shark live in a pond? Sharks live in water, but not me. I like to swim in the salty ocean. They need the big ocean, not a little pond. Let's see. Could it be a howler monkey? No, I like a forest full of tall, tall trees. Let's see who's under the last one. A dragonfly. Do dragonflies like to live at the pond? Yes, it's me. I live here. Dragonfly likes the still cool pond. She zooms around catching flies and mosquitoes and lays her eggs in the water. So dragonflies are good because they eat lots of mosquitoes. So we'd like to see dragonflies. Let's see. From the jungle to the pond to ah, who lives in this dry, sunny grassland? Hmm. Now I seem to remember a couple of animals said they liked to be where there was grass. Let's see. Is it giant clam? No. Clams live in the ocean. Is it... Arctic fox? Not me. I like to live where it's icy and frosty, which the name Arctic kind of gave that away. Let's see. Is it toucan? Not me. I like big trees with lots of fruit to eat. Let's see. It must be someone in this last one. Is it meerkat? It's me. I live here. Do you remember who else said they like to live there? The cheetah. Now from the grasslands 
we will go, oops, Meerkat likes the dry sunny grassland because he lives here with his big family. They watch out for enemies and dig in the sand to find beetles and millipedes to eat. So now from the grasslands, we go to who lives on this coral reef in the warm, clear, salty ocean. Now we saw a couple of others before that said they like to live in the ocean. Let's see. Is it a water strider? The little water bug. Not me. I like smooth, still water to run out around on. So, so she would like the pond, I bet. Let's see. Is it a poison dart frog? Not me. I like to live where there are trees and lots of rain. So they, they live in the rainforest. Hmm. Could it be a ringed seal? Well, they do like to live in the ocean, but not me. I like to live in the cold, icy ocean, not the warm coral reefs. Must be under here. Is it the clownfish? It's me. I live here. And, and what clownfish do we know? You know Nemo and his daddy Marlin, and they live in the sea anemone. Is that a hard word to say? Now, from <clears throat> clownfish likes his warm, clear, salty ocean. He lives hidden in the anemone where he's safe and cozy. And because of anemones sting other animals, it helps protect the clownfish because the clownfish are immune to it. Now, from the warm ocean. <gasps> Who lives here in the snowy, frozen Arctic near the icy North Pole? Is it the newt? And a newt is an amphibian, like kind of like a frog. They live both in water and on land. But not me. I like water that is not frozen. Could it be the jackal? Not me. I like to live where it's warm and dry. Hmm. Could it be the bannerfish? Not me. I like a warm ocean, not a cold one. It's me, polar bear. I live here. And who else did we see? Do you remember? They even had Arctic in their name. That's right, the Arctic fox. Polar bear likes the snowy Arctic. And they have a thick furry coat that helps them stay warm. She hunts for seals in the frozen sea. Remember seal said he liked it where it was cold? Her thick furry coat keeps her warm when it's colder than a freezer. And look, we see Arctic fox. And the snow goose. So we saw lots of different kinds of places where animals live. In still water, in warm ocean water, cold ocean water, jungles, forests, grasslands. But who lives here? In the house? <laughs> That's right. It's us. People live in the house. Uh, and that is the end. We saw lots of different animals and habitats in that one. Now we're going to move into talking about wildlife that lives right around here in Colorado. Are you ready? And we're going to do another song. And this time we're going to use the tune of If You're Happy and You Know It. And we will do sounds or motions that some of these animals do. Are you ready? Here we so we're going to start with. If you're a bear and you know it, show your claws. Grr. If you're a bear and you know it, show your claws. Grr. If you're a bear and you know it, then your claws will surely show it. If you're a bear and you know it, show your claws. Grr. Next is the mountain lion. 
If you're a mountain lion and you know it, give a snarl. And can I hiss just like a house cat? If you're a mountain lion and you know it, give a snarl. If you're a mountain lion and you know it, then your snarl will surely show it. If you're a mountain lion and you know it, give a snarl. Good job. Now the next one is a moose. If you're a moose and you know it, show your antlers. If you're a moose and you know it, show your antlers. If you're a moose and you know it, your antlers will surely show it. If you're a moose and you know it, show your antlers. Make your antlers. And now we have, do you know what these are? I saw some of these for the first time a couple of weeks ago. These are bighorn sheep, and they graze on the steep sides of the mountains. So, and what do you think a sheep says? Just like other sheep and goats, they say, bah. So if you're a bighorn sheep and you know it, say, bah, bah. If you're a bighorn sheep and you know it, say, bah. Bah. If you're a bighorn sheep and you know it, then your ba will surely show it. If you're a bighorn sheep and you know it, say ba ba. Now, do you know what this one is? So this one is the golden eagle. And I've seen these down nearby here at Lake Pueblo. And sometimes in the winter, we can see bald eagles there too. So if you're in... Eagle and you know it, flap your wings, flap your wings. If you're an eagle and you know it, flap your wings. If you're an eagle and you know it, then your wings will surely show it. If you're an eagle and you know it, flap your wings. All right, let's see, we'll do one more. And what is this? A rattlesnake. And you see, he's sticking his tongue out, and that's how they sense things in the environment. They taste and smell when they stick their tongue out. So are you ready? If you're a rattlesnake and you know it, stick out your tongue. If you're a rattlesnake and you know it, stick out your tongue. If you're a rattlesnake and you know it, then your tongue will surely show it. If you're a rattlesnake and you know it, stick out your tongue. All right, good job. Now, our next story is going to have some animals that you can find in Colorado. And it, and I, if you remember, you, we've seen these friends before when we had our story time about moose. So we have moose and a bear and a beaver. And this is called Walk on the Wild Side. And the story was written by Nicholas Oldland, and he made the pictures, too. And we have Kids Can Press to thank for letting me share the story with you today. So let's see how these friends walk on the wild side and look at the mountains with the snow on top. It looks kind of like the mountains we can see around here. They walk on the wild side. There once was... A moose, who, uh, a moose, a beaver, and a bear who loved adventures, but sometimes their competitive natures got in the way. And we saw a little bit of that in the last story with them, didn't we? One sunny morning, the moose the, and beaver and the bear decided it was a great day to climb a mountain. To get to the mountain, they descended down into a valley, walked through a grassy field. Are we there yet? They just got started. They waded through a stream, splash, splash, and crossed a deep canyon. Don't look down. Would you be brave enough to crawl across a log over a deep canyon? I don't know if I could do that. At the foot of the mountain, they stopped for a snack. Between mouthfuls, 
the bear, the moose, and the beaver discussed ways to make their hike more interesting. The beaver thought the best way to add some excitement was to make it a race. So as soon as they finished their last bites, the three friends were off and running. The race was on. Who do you think will win? Let's see. Thanks to his long legs, the moose took an early lead. Moose are big and have very long legs. But the beaver and the bear followed right on his tail. So they went up, they went down, they went across the river, they ran across the log and up the mountain. Then, just as Moose rounded a bend in the mountain path, a boulder came tumbling down towards him. You have to watch out for falling boulders when you're hiking around the mountains. Fortunately, the moose jumped out of harm's way just in time. But unfortunately, he had jumped off the side of the mountain. Ah! Oh no, is he going to go splat? Oh, phew. He caught a branch as he was falling. When the beaver rounded the bend, the moose was out of sight. Worried that he had fallen behind, the beaver picked up his pace, so he thought Moose had gotten farther ahead. When the bear came running by, fortunately, he heard Moose's cries for help. Help! Help! And he followed the sound to the mountain's edge, where he saw the moose dangling from a tree branch. Oh, can, can he hold on? Hold on, Moose! Can Bear help him? Let's see. Fearlessly, the bear attempted a daring rescue. Sadly, he failed. He fell too. Whoops. Thanks to Moose's quick reflexes, he caught him. Bear's life was saved. Thanks, friend. But now they were both hanging on for their lives. So now Bear and Moose are in trouble. Can they hold on? Will someone come help them? The moose and the bear's cries for help echoed up the mountain. Help, help, help. The beaver followed their calls and came back down the path. But he saw, and the beaver's instincts kicked in. He chewed down a tree, carved out notches, and lowered the simple ladder to the moose and the bear so they could climb up. That was very good thinking of the beaver, wasn't it? Very clever to make a ladder out of a log. Back on solid ground, the three friends realized their hike had become a little too exciting. If they were going to make it to the top of the mountain, a slower pace might be better. So faster isn't always better. If you're hiking on narrow trails on the side of the mountain, it's better to be slow and careful. And that's when their hike became truly interesting. Since they were going slower, they saw things they might have missed otherwise. They stopped and explored a dark cave. They discovered dinosaur fossils. Wouldn't that be cool? There are dinosaur fossils in Colorado, so you might find something. And they helped one another along the way. And at the end of the day, the bear, the moose, and the beaver agreed that reaching the top of the mountain was great, but enjoying the journey together was even better. So sometimes it's better to take your time and enjoy things along the way and enjoy your company. And that is what our three friends learned while on their hike on the mountain. All right. And that is my last story. But we have lots of other stories about all kinds of animals here at the library. And if you would like to learn more about wildlife and wild. We have lots of books for that, too. I grabbed a couple of examples, like this one on African wildlife. It's 
So this is where you could learn about lions and hyenas, and zebras, and gazelles and cheetahs and lots of other animals that live in Africa. Um, we have this one called Hidden Wildlife. And this is all about how animals use camouflage so they can hide from predators. And we have lots of books that are about individual animals. So if you would like to learn more about wildlife and learn more about how to protect wildlife, just come by and we will help you pick out some books. And in, we also have our early literacy kits available for March. And right after the story time, I'll do a quick unboxing video to show you all the goodies in that. So are we ready for our goodbye song? Let's wave goodbye. Story time is over. Wave goodbye. Story time is over. Wave goodbye. Story time is done. And I hope that you had fun. Story time is over. Wave goodbye. All right. And I'll see you see my friends next week, Wednesday at 1030. And in the meantime, I hope you get outside and enjoy the great weather we're having this week. So take care. Until next time.